see, and then my stalker sends me an email saying, I'm going to come kidnap you from Kamikaze. Well, I know the owners of that's our comic book convention. Right. I know the owners. So um, with them, I set up a sting. And that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. So he came looking for me, and then the security there and some cosplay dudes, it's Batman and Superman, hold him down and until LAPD gets there, and then he's taken to jail, and then the Kardashians serve him with a restraining order because I had been working with them. To, so they had this amazing ex-massage, which you don't mess around with massage right, security right, 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 team, right? right. So they, I knew about them because we had been like interacting, trying to catch this guy. Um, but the so he was stalking them too? Or oh yes, there's now. more, there's more. So I knew that they were gonna serve him as well, and out of nowhere, Gwyneth Paltrow serves him. I didn't even know she was in the mix. He tried to get her kids to school. Wow. So yeah, so he tried to get my dog from the dog groomer too. I have a restraining order for my dog, which you can do in 33 states. That's a thing. You should be able to do it in 30 states, obviously. I know. Because dog napping is a form harm, of yes. creating terror exactly. in the victim, which is part of the whole matrix. Exactly. Create terror. Yep. And create. I mean, and try to create this sense that you start to think. One hundred percent. You nailed it. Well, I'm, I'm wrapping my head around the surreal image of Batman and Superman. All of it. Everything in my story is wild. So then I get more of the story. So then he was like in holding. Remember, this is around Halloween when this right. happened. I still have not had my day in court because he's mentally unfit. So we haven't even. But he's still he's, he's incarcerated now. Yeah, but we haven't. I mean, the the problem is like people have to realize that. Okay, so in California, I want to say two years ago, there was a proposition that was passed, which was very misleading to the public. And the way it was sold to us was, okay, anybody who has a nonviolent offense gets reduced jail time, which sounds great. Get the potheads out. Who cares? Right. What they don't explain to you is that a lot of crimes from sexual assault to stalking are, are categorized as nonviolent offenses. Right. So people who don't get you know, prosecuted enough, they plead their way out. Now they're getting even more reduced sentencing. It's terrible. So the max that he's going to get for felony stalking for me is four years, which really means two. And I was going to rinse and repeat and do it all over again. And you brought up a really interesting thing that I want to talk about. And I always say that true stalking, right, like when a person doesn't get help, it doesn't end until somebody dies, you That's or right. them. I mean, look at what happened with Sandra Bullock. Her stalker just killed himself. That's the one who broke into her house. And I always say, like, you know, Luckily, she was able to get to her panic room, but like, I live in a studio apartment. I live in a panic room. Like, where am I supposed to go? Right. What, yeah. you know, who's got a panic? Who's got a panic room? It's yeah. people don't realize that usually these stories, like you hear about the celebrity version, which it's true and it's real and it's valid for them, but they, you know, have privilege and stuff that we don't have. The right. seven point five million of us. Well, what you're there. saying is you're saying you've been stalked, you know. And you're not Definitely. a celebrity. You I mean, know, you're a celebrity now because you're on my show. Oh, okay. but, but this is, yeah. No, but um, I, I grew up uh, in women's shelters for a good portion of my life because my mother had um, very poor choices in men. And I remember seeing a little girl at my biological father when she remarried would send her underwear and Bibles, you're still my wife. And, you know, she would, would we have to jump from Juneau to catch him because I grew up in Alaska. And she would be running from him. And then what bothers me is the way women's shelters are ran. I mean, in Alaska, they're great. Um, but down here, they're, they're horrible. All over the country, they're horrible. They're supposed to be um, a safe zone for you, but they kick you out during the day or they won't let you have in. You have your kids, you're hungry, you're scared. They're, they don't protect you like they should. Um, I remember one Christmas when I was about four, we had like a skylight at the women's shelter down, and the one woman's ex husband was drunk and he crawled up on the skylight and he was banging down trying to get her, and they just, they don't really, they don't do anything. Well, and, and what Wendy Siegel was explaining to me is you really can't do anything until he hurts you. And she That's said exactly until, right. because that it, she knew that that was going to happen if we didn't, if we had not gotten that letter. So she said, relax a bit. He's going to keep coming after you and he's going to have a verbal threat on paper. At that point, we can do something. But, you know, I mean, well, but to this day, I, I think... Okay, he, he had people that loved him too. He had an ex-wife uh, that he ran away from a couple times um, in Iowa and, and out to California and back and forth, back and forth for a few years according to the history of the family that he left behind. Uh, and as he started to go more off the deep end, they didn't even know where to find him. So this is a kind of a typical story they do have markers in their past, yes. but drawing a continuum of that story 
is where there's a lot of missing link here. Right. And how many people have to be stalked? And men get stalked too. Oh, sure. oh, yeah. How many people have to live in um, with that threat mm -hmm. that, okay, I have to be the decoy. I have to be the decoy. That's my job to be the decoy so that they can get that person. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's a multi-tier problem. Like, you hit the nail on the head. It starts with mental illness because, true stalking, there's some level of mental illness happening, right? So you've got that. Then you have law enforcement not being adequately trained. And then law enforcement can't enforce laws that don't exist. So there's really no help to be had. And What know, type of legislation needs to happen? Well, I could, I could tell you. Um, there's, <coughs> there's, I mean, there's, like I said, the, the first thing is just if you can't get any help until a restraining order is served, then you need to do what I'm saying about electronic process. That'll make things different, right? So then they can actually... Right. Because, like, Bree, you're so lucky that you had the letter and they were able to, you know, the DA was on it when he was amazing. But in my case, I had the restraining order. I had 4,000 violations. I have 4,000 times you violated by contacting me. They don't come in like die hard with helicopters looking for your person. Like, you can call and say, I'm getting death threats, I'm getting death threats, but and they don't follow up on it. You so. had to grow completely distrustful of, of the authorities. Yeah, it is. really changes your worldview. I mean, I was taught, even though it was like a punk rock kid and there's like an anti-authority element to that, but I was taught by my father to have the utmost respect for law enforcement. He was actually a police surgeon, which is something that they have in New York. So I, I grew up with him having to badge being a doctor cop, weird thing. Mm -hmm. um, but when you really, your whole worldview changes when you're like, wait a second, law enforcement actually isn't there to help me the way that I think they are, and then the laws don't really work. Like, who's running this place? Like, it really, it's it, it's terrifying once you realize that. And, and speaking of who's running the place, uh, you said you had uh, correspondence with the Kardashians. Have you had correspondence with Ivanka Trump? Um, I've called her out in multiple newspapers. They, I mean, the New York Daily News. Like, it, I've tried to because it's a bipartisan issue. It doesn't matter where we stand politically. Yeah. I right. mean, it doesn't. Politics right. should have nothing to do. And with you, would right. th you would think a, a, a father would uh, be, you know, if, if that's happening, he would be the one to step in. Yeah, I've called her out in multiple publications and said I'd love an opportunity to speak with you. It's something we could work on. We have a shared thing and. Um, I have a mutual friend with her, and he said, like, oh, she knows who you are, but she ha has, hasn't, maybe she's well, a big fan see, of this show, and she'll contact me. Uh, yeah, yeah. We you, see you, a certain lack of respect yeah. right. on the part of our executive uh, uh, for women. Yes. Obviously. Uh, well, that's why lack but, of but, but it always wasn't that way, because I was surprised in my extensive research to find that Bob Dole and George Walker Bush both honored you. Bob Dole did indeed, and you're right, George W. did it. Because yeah, I, I, right. I, I yeah, know you're, you're When we got the ADA pass. A diehard liberal. Uh, yeah, Bob uh, Dole was the one who presented me with this wonderful leadership award uh, for my part in working with ADA and getting to get it passed, and uh, you know, that was very much an honor. Yes, and I, and I got a chance to. Uh, and that was well, passed on George w. George W. Bush as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, probably yeah. the best thing he did. The best thing he did. It's yeah. one of the, and he, of course, every president gets an opportunity to do many good things, um, and there's always a mix. You know, every president has their dark spots in their history too. It's just, I mean, it's it's just part of the job. Um, but to have this, we have a current atmosphere where if someone wants to say, well, I don't really respect women. It's almost like it's okay to say that now, and it that happens. feels like we're going yeah. backwards. Yeah. Is it? Because I yeah. thought, it, I, I mean, well, and I was going to ask you about the, the hashtag Me Too, if you ever had any dealings with Les Moonves. No, um, I think because I was working in an anchor position and an investigative reporter position, right. I think they left me alone, or because I have weird hands and feet, I'm just a freak, and they didn't want anything to do with me because they schemed it. I don't know, but it, um, no, I had But, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, just basically everything we're reading, it sounds like uh, the newsrooms in particular are really... Well, because you were, cause you were uh, CBS. Well, I, I, I mean, as, I think you texted me saying I might be the only <laughs> person who hasn't been hit with sexual... Uh, harassment. Yeah, yeah, harassment I, I, charges. I know, and, yeah, I mean, and you were... <laughs> with, you and I, I, I think I was going to text back to you, and I don't know if I got around to it. Um, so I'll just tell you that. Is this a compliment, or is this a, uh, or is this something that should make me? I, I, it, just, it, just seemed, it just seemed like every every week every. Am I not loved? No, no. It seemed like every week there was some I'm sort kidding. of thing. Yeah. And I think uh, I think that week there might have been. Oh, oh, that's what it was. It was the one from Fox News, the the female reporter. 
selling yeah. kids sexual harassment. That's why, yeah. that's why I was like, wait a second, what's going on? Like everybody's like, something about reading the news just gets people weird. Well, no, I mean, I'll say this. It's like it's I signed a non-disclosure, so I really can't say a whole lot. But I had my own settlement two months before me 